Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio. Today, it was the afternoon, I don't normally paint in the afternoon because usually I feel a little bit more, what's the word, sort of full of the joys of spring in the morning. Um, but anyway, today I feel as if I I can, I might be able to, I'll give it a try. Uh, it's first day of spring today actually in this part of the world. It's the 20th of uh, March and um, the day is beautiful. It's actually a really nice day. Daffodils and everything are out there blooming. Anyway, um, I thought I would do something with my Art Nouveau set today and I realized that I hadn't used it for a while and I thought I would just show you a new set I just bought well, a while ago. I got these because I thought maybe they wouldn't be available again because for a while they were kind of out of stock. So I have a completely new set and I just wanted to show you what they look like. Do they call this an unboxing? I'm not sure what it is. It's a, I'm a klutzing thing. Come on. <clears throat> okay, let's try that another way. There we go. That's the way to do it. Okay, so it comes in this nice Japanese box like this, nice and sturdy and everything. And the paints are here and they're covered to protect them with a plastic protector. And um, what they are is written on here in English as well as Japanese. And you can make little swatch color guiding, guiding things on there for yourself. And on the piece of paper that's inside the wrapping here, you've got... Um, the names and the type, the colours in there. And the thing that's nice about this particular set is that they're all nice and soft and subtle and quite pastel-y. And uh, as you can see in this little demonstration painting there, and I've used them quite a lot for, um, what do you call it, vintage style paintings. But they're just nice colours. And um, this is something I did, and I'm gonna do something a bit like that today. I know this has been done before. I'm not claiming this is an original idea by any manner of means, um, but everyone's version of it is their own, and therefore I don't think there's anything wrong with doing it. So uh, <laughs> So anyway, so this is my current set that I'm going to use. It's the same paints. These ones here are the Kuretake Art, Art Nouveau set. These three are the metallics that came from another set of Kuretake paints and these are Kuretake graphite colours and so all of these kind of work together and I just put them, I took them out of their green box because um, they started to get messy and I wanted to be able to move them around so that they were in a, in a kind of, for me, a logical arrangement of the neutrals and sort of the yellowy brown colours here, pinks down here and then the blues going into the greens and that sort of made sense to me rather than the way they have them arranged, which um, is fine. Maybe it makes sense too, but you know, they, it, uh, well, it doesn't speak to me anyway, but whatever, uh, they're nice colors and let's have a go at painting with them. I'm going to use a piece of 12 by nine um, watercolor paper. This happens to be Meaden 100% cotton cold press, 300 grams paper. Uh, it's glued all the way around so that it doesn't cockle when you use it, which saves me a lot of time in stretching paper and so on and so forth, which I no longer need to do. Um, as far as brushes go, uh, I could use anything for this really. I'm probably going to use a medium sort of sized round um, because that's what I generally use a lot. I could use, I could use my Craftmo brush, this one here, uh, from the set that we did with Craftmo. Uh, that is a size 14 round. I could use Princeton Aqua Elite. They're quite nice too. They come to a very good point, both of those. Um, so all, all very good. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, what I am going to do first before I do anything else though is clean the middle of this palette so that if I 
want to um, mix up anything. But one of the nice things about the Kuretake paints is that you don't have to, um, well, uh, you can use them straight from the palette, from the little pans, and you get quite nice colours. A lot of traditional watercolours need to be um, mixed because they're a bit basic, but I don't know. It's a different way of painting, and these are a little bit like gouache. They're a little bit more, oh, not exactly opaque, but they have more kind of oomph to them. So I think, you see this one here that I did before, what I did was I just painted, I picked random colours and I put them on the piece of paper, and then I just did some doodles in, in those squares. So I think I'm going to start off the same. I, I don't feel like being particularly imaginative today, so I'm going to eyeball it. Should be able to get three by four on there. And this is a great way to practice using these paints if you've just bought them and you don't really know how they're going to pan out, so to speak. So we're going to make three here. So we'll just, just paint nicely a square, one, two, three, four. I'm going to make that a bit bigger. If you're not confident with your ability to estimate size and spacing and so on, and you think you'll go haywire, then measure, divide it up using a ruler and so on and so forth. It is warm. And then you'll be more confident about that. So I'm going to just drop in on one side there, a little bit more darker pink, and then we'll let that sort of move around a little bit. Then for the next one, going down, I think we'll we'll do, no, not going down, going across. Let's use this colour. Looks like milky coffee, doesn't it? And we just put that in. Sorry about the background noise of the dogs. They just came back from a walk. Just roughly sort of um, even. It doesn't need to be geometrically accurate. And I'm just going to put some darker colouring on one side of that as well. Move that hair. And then the next one... Let's do that in lilac, maybe. It doesn't look very lilac-y. I think we'll go for grey. There we are. And I was talking to somebody earlier today and found myself saying how, how much painting is done these days, which is done just for relaxation. And actually, the lady I was talking to has recently lost her mother and I know she's almost certainly feel, well bound to be feeling the strain of that and um, so yeah I mean that's the thing isn't it that's why we do these things to take our minds off of things and as you go along you'll sort of think to yourself oh I should have done so and so or what if I did such and such so I'm, I'm making this one a bit bigger to give it a little bit of um so then therefore I'll make this one a bit bigger give it a bit more shadow down the side there I don't know why why not and then this one the same we would just make it a little bit darker down that side there and then what color should we do next uh this is a lilac color perhaps we'll go for that kind of grey and you can always add a bit more of something else to it. You could do circles instead of squares, doesn't matter. Um, let's put a bit more grey in that. That grey is kind of opaque-y, kind of granulating-y. And then what about this one? The nice thing about this set of paints is, I think, anyway, 
that they um, they just go together, all the colours. They don't argue with one another. They just use them. Um, you can just use them more or less at random and, well, completely at random actually. I'm barely thinking about it. But what you will do if you're doing this, if you're following along or doing something similar, you will learn a lot about, and it's kind of, you know, it's kind of, I want to spread that out a bit because I made a mess of that. It's kind of uh, subconscious. You, you, don't, you don't need to be thinking seriously about what you're doing. You just need to do it. And you'll learn whether you like it or not. So I'm just picking up these different colours. This one looks like vanilla. Nice creamy vanilla ice cream, you know, made with real cream. Yum. And how about this pink? Pastely pink. Sometimes it's just really nice not to do something that needs to look like something. I think often it's it's nice to do something that doesn't look like something. Um, how about this one? We haven't used this one yet. Is that going to be very similar? No, this is skin tone kind of colour, this one. I don't suppose I'm allowed to say that. I think it is meant to be. And then I'm going to put a bit of rusty colour in there, just in half of it. And, that. and what should we put down the bottom? Maybe... Maybe I'll do one that's all like that. Maybe, maybe not. Perhaps that's too much. And that. And another mauve, I think, maybe. What about, have we used that one? I think we did, didn't we? And the fun bit is the next bit where you come in and you put your doodles in. You have to let it dry first. I'm going to put another beige one in. Let's go with this one. So when I've done this, let's put some of that in. Um, I'll get the hairdryer and we will just dry it and then come back and do the next the next step. Okay, now for the designs that I'm going to do on top of these patches, I'm going to use um, one of the things I'm going to use is this set of Mab um, watercolors. These are handmade uh, honey-based uh, glitter paint paints that you can get from the lady who makes these and she sells them on Etsy. So I'll put a link to her Etsy shop underneath in the description if you're interested in taking a look at those. They are rather nice and very different from anything else that I've ever used. And she kindly sent me some of them to try out. So I'm going to do just that right now. And these colors look completely different when they're dry from what they, this one looks purple. I'm picking up mauve and when I put it on here, it goes uh, blue, but I don't know whether that's what it actually looks like when it's on the page. So um, yeah, we'll see, won't we, what happens. So I'm just going to do a spiral here using this color. And uh, I think 
This might be one of the ones that looks different depending on what angle you look at it from. So uh, kind of holographic sort of thing. So we can do that and then we can put some dots around. And again, as I've said so many times before, you're not trying to uh, perform or do anything special, but you're learning all the time how your paints are going to be working and reacting, which is fun. So that's that one. And I'm going to pick it up and look at it. And oh, yeah, if you look, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, there's a glitter there. And as I'm looking at it, it's uh, purple and blue. That's really rather nice, actually. So that's that's a good start, isn't it? Let's see what we get with this one, the second one along. That also looks blue when it's on the palette. Interesting. Do some nice leaves. Yeah, that's very interesting. And we can do a little border around the outside edge if you want to. I've been sorting out my um, studio and um, I'm trying to make a bit more space so that I can have a bigger working area than I've got at the moment. My desk is a bit too small. So if you're going to have something big coming in, something else has got to go out. And luckily, um, we have a, a shop in our village here, which um, is a second-hand shop to support animals. They rehome and take care of stray dogs and cats, especially cats, lots of them this time of year starting to be born. Um, anyway, they've been they've been going for ages, but this year they've had a bit of a revamp and they've started an art group. And so I thought maybe they might like some materials. So today we just took um, a few easels which are surplus to my needs down there. Why am I saying this? Um, I can't remember now. I'll think of it in a minute. Okay, I'm going to do one big leaf on here. Why was I telling you about that? It'll come back to me, probably. It doesn't matter if it doesn't. Hmm, funny, isn't it? in the middle of saying something and you forget what you were saying. When I listen to it back, when we're editing it, I'll probably remember what I was saying. Anyway, uh, never mind. <laughs> okay, so then we'll do um, some little leaves on here. There we are. Okay. Lift a little bit of that out. When you um, want to remove paint using a brush, if you just dry your brush off, then it will suck up paint from the paper, you see. So you can suck it away using the brush. It's quite a good way of doing it. And when these are dry, we'll come in with some pen work and do something penny on there. Um, let's try one of these silvery ones, shall we, shall not we? Oh, that would probably work quite, oh no, it doesn't show up. 
Well, you never know what's going to happen, do you? Um, okay. They're all shiny and glittery. Um, let's put some blue circles on here, shall we? Okay, and what about this greenish colour here? I how that will work. There we are. And we could put some dots in places around the outside edge. You know, it's completely up to you, obviously, how you decorate these squares and what you decide you want to do, how much you want to do. Um, let me see. All of A lot of these seem to be on the brown side, which I don't know if I really want so many with this brownish hue, so let's see what we can do with the blue. Definitely had enough brown up there. That's quite nice. And this one, perhaps here. Perhaps we can do... Mm, not sure about that, that doesn't look quite right. Let's go for the mauve. It's better. This is the kind of video, I think, where you might think, oh, we really ought to have um, music on this one. I'm going to just use some brown here. Not that colour brown, that's too dark, but some orange, I mean, really. Like that, yeah. I think the thing is just remember to go with the flow and don't judge yourself. Put a rose here, something like a rose. Yeah, that's good. And one more. This one does is looking a bit sad, isn't it? I think I'm going to lift some of that colour out of there. Sometimes the saddest one, when you go back and you revisit it and you say, you look sad, I'm going to cheer you up by doing something special to you. And this one looks a bit sad as well. Too dark. So we'll do that and then Press on it with the piece of paper towel. And then you could pick up a bit of colour and sort of just use the paper towel to do some, uh, makes me think Stone Age paintings on cave walls, you know. 
smudges like that to make it look kind of built in. That's better, isn't it? And then this one, we could do something similar with this. Perhaps some prints in the corner. You could call this printing if you want it to be posh. There we are, some fingerprints. That's good. And once we've had that idea, we might say, oh, we can do a bit more of that. Let's pick up some of this silver and put some silver on here. See what happens then. Oh, look at that. Oh. <laughs> okay. Interesting. It seems very... Wow. Something else, isn't it? Let's put some of that around the outside edge as well. Hmm. Oh, we've got one down here that we haven't done at all yet. Um, I think I'm going to stamp a bit of background. I'm going to pick up some beige because I'm a little bit uh, restrained. So I'll pick up some beige and put a nice printed background on there. And then I'll pick up a bigger brush and something dark. And then we'll just join those on using a smaller brush. And then a couple of spatters. That's interesting. Okay, we're sort of, we're having a, a kind of, um, I don't know, what are we having? Let's pick up a bit more of this brown and we'll put some printing in the middle of these. That's quite interesting, I think, quite interesting. Now, what should we do next? Um, yeah, there's lots of things that we could do. I'm sort of wondering, we could do nothing, could leave it like this, or I could come in with, for example, um, sepia pen not sure if that would be enough might be could do circles And this one, we could have a nice center vein, and then we could put little mini leaflets. Like that. Perhaps circles in the corners. It's funny how much a little difference like that can make. Could have spirals in the corners too. Hmm. 
I like the rustic effect of this one. I think I made a bit of a mess there. Might be able to get that off with a brush. Doesn't really matter. Anyway, so you can carry on and do lots and lots of different things. We've got these lovely colours that we can add. So, yeah, these M-A-B watercolours, I think she calls herself Mab, um, for these. And the other thing I've been using is the Art Nouveau set. I'm not going to touch that one. I think that one's quite nice. And I think I'm going to stop here. You could, you could come in with a white pen, actually. I did on the last one quite a lot of white but I don't I'm not feeling in the mood for white at the moment so I think I'm going to leave that like that and you could obviously add a lot more glitter we've got lots more glitter here um, the problem with the with the glitter on the camera is that you can't really see it to its best advantage you can sort of see it I think but not very well and so it doesn't really um, it doesn't really lend itself terribly well to to this process. But yeah, it's not it's not too bad. I think it shows up pretty well. And um, I like this I like this uh, this stamping thing. I quite like that kind of uh, rustic Stone Age kind of effect. So I think that's all I want to do today. I'm going to have to go and cook dinner now. So there we are. This is the one I did the other week, month, last year actually, I think, which I did in a um, an X Canson XL sketchbook. This is um, mixed media paper, and it's really nice to work on. Um, I was quite excited by the way. This is Kurataki paint. Here. It's very vibrant and easy to make uh, a big splash with, quite nice. And uh, we did a cockerel, and these are various different things. I don't know if we did a tutorial of that one, or did this one. It's going back a bit now, this is last year. These were all videos from last year, I missed a page there by accident. Then I ended up with that, and so now I've actually reproduce that like this on medium paper and um, really just a bit of a game isn't it it's just fun relaxation I shall uh, now go into the house and uh, engage with the curry so I'll let you go and uh, do check the um, description below for information about these paints if you feel like getting hold of any of them from Etsy and um, have fun if you do so I'll let you go and I'll say bye-bye for now, everybody. Bye-bye.